Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the TA class uh, on lithography optics. Now this is a very important class considering uh, the importance of microfabrication in neural engineering that is first thing. Second thing so far uh, PVD techniques or thin film deposition techniques including PVD and CVD, uh, thermal evaporation, e-beam, sputtering or CVD all the types of CVD have been discussed okay. This all are thin film deposition technique. After that uh, the next thing is uh, the patterning of deposited thin film where uh, photolithography comes into the picture. Now lithography also uh, it has been taught uh, to you up to an extent in this particular TA class and it is like a, a series of two TA class. I would like to uh, give you an idea to realize that how this microstructures will ultimately pattern or realized on your desired substrate. So this is like a brief overview of the agenda of this particular uh, course, uh, this particular uh, like, uh, series of two TA classes and that is why uh, we have named it lithography optics. So this is like a more of a interactive uh, module. So we will quickly uh, see uh, the basic lithography techniques, how it works and how optics plays the role in lithography, how uh, optically the design on your mask uh, will be reflected or patterned or transferred to your substrate. Uh, how we can get a faithful reproduction of the design on the mask, mm, what are the different techniques to get a finer and finer dimensions and how we can enhance that particular uh, microstructures. Everything we will see in this uh, part of two TA classes. So this is the overall idea. So this I would uh, suggest all of the uh, people who are specifically uh, interested in uh, lit uh, lithography and all, you can go through this particular link, it will give you a detailed picture. Uh, considering this course, I will tell you first of all wafer would be there, you will cut particular material, pre-bake it, okay. This is nothing but PR coating, okay, photoresist coating. Now you all know what is photoresist, how it helps in uh, patterning and all this thing. Again, this is a mask. Now this mask is being made and this mask uh, is kept here. This is your illumination your optical source with some setting of uh, uh, this particular lens. Here only one thing is shown but there are series of reflector is being used, series of uh, lenses or let us say reflector is being used. Again why this is being used is uh, to guide your uh, particular optical illumination, illuminated light in one particular direction. Then it will go to this particular lens, further it will be go here and then once after this objective lens, this is called condenser lens, this is your mask and this is your objective lens, it will finally fall onto your wafer, okay, that particular area. Here what happens is, uh, this is your photo resist, right, name itself as photo. So it has a material or it has a, you know, thing which is uh, sensitive to a particular light. So when your light falls onto the certain region, some chemical process happen, either that region gets so, so that region will be a soluble or it either it will be etched up or removed that region or uh, the uh, uh, other way around, the region which is not exposed will get etched up, okay. So all this thing uh, will be considered and then this is how uh, overall uh, litho uh, you know process, uh, exposure process works. Further uh, what happens is uh, as I mentioned this is like a mask and uh, this is objective lens further, okay. Uh, then it will be this is like a uh, pre-bake, okay. Here it is characterized by two things, one is temperature and one is duration, okay. Uh, at what temperature for how much period of time uh, this particular uh, photo deposited or coated photoresist should be pre-baked. Same thing goes for here also, okay, temperature and duration. Now again this temperature and duration is a function of your PR, 
okay uh, based on different pr you can uh, read or go through the data sheets of pr and identify that how much time you have to pre back or post back how uh, what be the width would be affected or over or uh, picture further you can develop it and then this metrology is nothing but characterization okay so this is an overall idea of how uh, photolithography technique works okay so uh, there are uh, before moving into the detail some quick uh, look at the things what have been already covered there are basic unit process okay very important point what are the unit processes in microfabrication so it has been already taught if you are aware about that that's fine otherwise i would like you to you know pause the video and try to remember or recollect what are this process okay so uh, there are different processes uh, one is thin film deposition i already covered or uh, informed you in the beginning of this class it can be pvd or cvd based on the uh, type of operation whether it's as i mentioned e beam sputtering blah 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 then it can be a pvd or if it is a uh, lpcvd or pcvd these are different type of cvd where to use pvd well to use cvd already been covered okay next thing is patterning okay patterning is nothing but litho only we generally mostly used optical lithography or photolithography then after pattern it needs to be etch out okay and finally characterization okay so these are like uh, four standard uh, unit process so characterization can be considered as a, a technique to validate the developed microstructure so that is like uh, second thing uh, next question is uh, i ask you to pause here right to know what is a, which is the most important process okay so can anybody you know no, like you can think about that and uh, let me know that what should be the you know most important process now here lithography now why lithography is the most important process is it because you know we are teaching this lithography in this tier class no 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 so uh, there is a reason behind lithography being the most important uh, process so what what can be that thing okay uh, so there are basically two reasons why this particular thing is most important one is moore's law now gordon moore founder of intel co-founder of intel has uh, uh, you know come up with this law every 2 years okay for the same region your transistor counts doubles okay how it doubles so there are some techniques what are the techniques it's keep on evolving mostly then uh, after some point of time let's say if it saturates or something there is something called more than more more than more okay so that you can check it it's a, a thing of uh, interested people can check that the particular thing but how this particular thing will help the transistor number get double which means you can have more functionality more functionality in the same area okay now how this will be helpful so when little bit of history when computer or you know your first computational device was invented it is almost like a big size of a big room where currently you can see in one particular mobile you can achieve all this computational facility and everything so yeah it's all due to this moore's law okay and second thing is cost okay how this cost would be important so like half of your fabrication cost goes in the lithography or optical lithography okay so yeah this entire thing all over is like a sequence of lithography okay and uh, this is how it will be patterned but because of this two particular region there is a cost of uh, lithography also i would like you to just emphasize this particular point of course that uh, sometimes there is a recall in fabrication industry or foundries uh, and there are uh, you know examples that due to recall one particular company has completely you know vanished or gone at least 10 to 15 years uh, back so uh, that shows the importance of that even if one thing fails okay how critical it would be for one particular 
company or foundry second thing if you get a chance or if you see the videos in youtube to see the foundries and all not only this particular thing okay even your all this process all this process would be completely automated okay no human intervention yes if some fault and some issue hap happens definitely there will be a technician or uh, you know person researchers who is handling that particular system but otherwise if you go into the fab lab or you know foundries uh, there will be a completely you know automated or robotic uh, way operation would be happening to just get the desired microstructure okay so yeah uh, main thing is uh, lithography one of the most important uh, phenomena or reason to get the overall uh, evolution in electric design and why it is more important again moore's law and the overall cost of the developed system okay so now uh, we'll see the next point lithography as we seen is one very important in lithography you can see these are the several steps right uh, coating pre bake post bake uh, exposure uh, development and finally characterization so which is uh, more important uh, out of all this right so again i would like you to pause the thing and think about that and uh, you know think that which one of them is better and why okay so let's see which one of them is uh, uh, you know more important or you know uh, the which one has in other words more scope of improvement okay so it is nothing but this optics which you can see in the shaded region here okay why optics is more important next question okay so same thing why lithography optic is the most important part in litho unit process fabrication litho is important why it's important already told in litho uh, optics or imaging is important again it's not because this ta class is on litho optics there are some certain reasons for that so what are the reason so it depends cd what is cd cd is nothing but critical dimension okay critical dimension is the lowest dimension okay lowest dimension of your microstructured uh, device okay entire process can be evaluated using your cd okay so and again moves low okay also coating now this when i say about coating okay uh, each of this thing we'll see quickly okay development and all and characterization this coating okay depends on spin speed it's basically a spin coater right S using spin uh, spin speed okay so how fast you run it so you can get a width so that there is a relation between uh, pr thickness again this coated pr thickness and spin speed right and for one particular pr it is identified and optimized pre bake and post bake i told duration and temperature for a pr or for several prs it is identified one more thing when i say pr there are several companies who make the pr okay let's say su8 is a negative photoresist okay negative photoresist now this su8 is one name of the photoresist like you get a proper let's say um, ip right so you know the formula of isopropyl alcohol or ipa or ethanol same way there won't be any fixed defined formula for this this su8 is a combination of several chemicals and known to a particular company who has made this particular thing generally they don't reveal everything in the particular data sheet but they will tell you that okay for this particular temperature this much time pre bake is fine post bake is fine so this basically the point of telling this uh, about this coating pre bake post bake or development or even for the characterization is that this thing is more or less optimized and saturated in terms of research whereas this thing still there is a huge scope of improvement and people are keep on you know digging it into the more and more detail and try to identify that what can be further improved to get the better resolution enhance the resolution okay so this is like a overall idea uh, in uh, fabrication why litho is important in litho why optics is important 
okay so uh, and in optics also when you are printing using lithography okay there are uh, different types of printing okay so which is this kind of printing okay so uh, there are three types of printing which is being generally used in litho okay so this is like contact printing proximity printing and projection printing i told you i'll try to make this interactive so far i have asked that uh, you know several questions ask you to pause the video now we have uh, come to a one like mcq kind of question right so this which type of printing is this okay so initially contact printing would be used when your mask or your desired structure will put into the contact of substrate and you will get a final design then proximity printing would be used and projection printing so this is basically as you can see uh, source uh, illumination results in some form of light and again condensation lens uh, mask and objective lens finally it projected on this particular uh, your wafer okay which has pr coated so this is again uh, it is like a projection printing proximity printing has its own limitations of uh, 4 micrometer so i hope you can see this projection printing here and uh, this is uh, 4 micrometer here okay so yeah this is like a, a overall idea now the main thing your entire game of fabrication or getting any microstructure depends on this particular aspect that is nothing but a resolution how finer how better how finer uh, structures you can get it uh, faithfully or reproduce on the substrate of wafer faithfully okay it is measured by resol uh, resolution now this resolution is again the formula of the resolution has is an empirical formula uh, that has been uh, uh, you know it's called Rayleigh's resolution formula uh, r is the smallest half pitch distance between two particular uh, let's say if i talk about id then two particular electrodes if i'm talking about uh, two uh, you know any other micro heaters or something then two consecutive uh, channels or two consecutive interconnects how finer it can be that is decided by this thing again it is a function of your wavelength wavelength of the uh, illumination or uh, you know the source you saw this particular source right illumination so wavelength uh, wavelength of that particular source and numerical aperture what is numerical aperture uh, that i will see in the coming slides so basically the ability to gather the different diffracted lights now it's slightly difficult to understand so we'll see with the help of the images and all k is a system parameter depends on several things that how you are giving the light whether the light is normal to the you know particular uh, wafer or whether it is oblique to the wafer based on that your parameter changes now if you want a lower resolution okay uh, what are the parameters which you can change so you want this guy this uh, particular parameter to get low so what you can do either you can low the k or you can low the lambda wavelength or you can increase the aperture okay aperture is the property of a particular medium okay so these are like some of the techniques to mathematically thinking how we can do that okay this is again the same thing what we have shown here this thing from top to bottom what you are seeing here okay same thing uh, it is showing here from optical in a simplistic manner from optical source condenser mask uh, condenser lens mask objective lens and finally the wafer okay how much you can move this particular objective lens okay yeah, again this is all imaging so your everything should be precisely placed and this as i mentioned simplistic image so only one lens is shown there will be a many lenses because each lens will uh, affect or you know guide your light into particular direction so uh, there will be a uh, you know let's say if in one particular uh, system you want higher gain you use multiple amplifiers to get the desired gain same analogy if you want to guide your light precisely you need to use multiple lenses but for the sake of simplicity we have shown only one same goes with objective lens also however mask would be exactly the same whichever is shown here okay and as i mentioned the light travels through diffraction and all so then it depends on where exactly you are placing your objective lens it needs to be very precise 
So, this uh, degree of uh, you know variability or tolerance your uh, this lens can go here and there uh, see even a slight movement can result in a defocused imaging defocused imaging means this structure will not appear here some other structure will appear here. So, which will uh, you know uh, spoil the purpose of getting a desired microstructure. So, that is why what we can use is we can exactly place this particular objective lens where you want to place it and then you can pattern it in your thing. So, even that, then that also slight amount of tolerance is allowed that is called depth of focus. So, there are two parameters one is resolution one is depth of focus resolution is what is the smallest half pitch you can be printed on your particular wafer or you know on your particular substrate whereas, uh, depth of focus is what is the uh, you know amount of uh, width you can put on uh, you know amount of uh, uh, movement you can allow your objective lens to do in order to get the desired faithful reproduction of the light ok. So, moving ahead this is the formula for depth of focus again like this is a empirical formula k2 is different than k ok. Uh, it is again a system parameter as we already discussed if you want to improve the resolution you need to decrease the k you need to increase the Na. Na is the property uh, you know uh, or you know the ability to acquire the different uh, certain diffraction order out of all diffraction. So, here if you see ok uh, some of the light will pass through, but when your structure is there it will get diffracted. Now, if it gets reflected like this or if it get diffracted like this it will not be acquired by this objective lens. So, this ability is nothing but your Na it depends on this angle higher the angle. Uh, you know if the angle is even more and more then it would be difficult to get everything in the objective lens ok. So, and then that diffractor order will be missed and we might uh, not get that much high fidelity or high quality uh, image production on the wafer ok. So, yeah uh, these are the you can increase the Na by adding more refraction order it has a physical interpretation also it has uh, you know formulaic or mathematical evidence also. You can also change the lambda, uh, but there is a limit on this. You can also change the system parameter k as I mentioned uh, this also depends on how you are giving the light and all this thing. Now, all this thing what we are discussing mathematically ok this all is the idea to improve your resolution mathematically same thing you can use by this method ok. These are some uh, very well known R E T's ok resolution enhancement techniques. So, one of them is phase shifting mask, one of them is off axis resolution which is morely related to this, one of them is immersion which is morely related to this, lowering wavelength this is related to this. So, this is like a you know overall idea or uh, you know uh, when we see in the next class uh, different RETs and how exactly this lithography and lithography related to optics and it has uh, you know basis in Fraunhofer and Fresnel diffraction ok. I hope you can remember what is that Fraunhofer diffraction and Fresnel diffraction ok when Fraunhofer diffraction should be used when Fresnel diffraction should be used we need to consider what parameters and you know uh, how this particular light is being diffracted here. So, we will uh, you know there will be based on this mass function based on this mask design there will be something called mass function ok. How that light will travel to here and then how diffracted pattern will look like all this thing we will see in the next class. Uh, so, but before moving that I just want to give you a brief idea that I mentioned this things have helped right. So, which parameter has helped immensely or out of which which parameter we need to work on see we are going top down ok. First we discussed in fabrication what we can improve lithography patterning in lithography what we can improve optics in lithography optics what we can improve resolution in lithography optic resolution what we can improve that we will see in this slide ok. So, yeah these are the different parameters I told you right again this resolution is the main hero of the fabrication process. So, resolution is nothing but k lambda by n a ok. So, over the course over the course of time which parameter has affect how much improvement ok. So, this is k in 1975 right. So, we are almost talking about 50 years back this is before 10 years ok. So, what parameter has improved immensely ok. So, k parameter has gone from 1 to 0 0.5 we need as less k as possible 
okay it has gone down by the multiple of 3.5 wavelength earlier 436 now we are getting 193 okay you can i think argon fluoride and kipton fluoride are the lasers used which corresponds to this wavelength you can check it if you have a better sources with lower wavelength you can use it but there is a certain limitation when you go from uh, certain wavelength to uh, lower wavelength it increases the frequency and when you keep on lowering uh, your wavelength it increases the frequency higher it increases the energy of a particular uh, all these things are electromagnetic waves so then increasing your optical uh, illumination energy further results in several other uh, unintended uh, rep uh, reproduction of emoji so it has slightly less uh, you know resolution here in 1975 overall resolution was like let us say 2.7 micrometer right so in two other words 2700 nanometer whereas in 2010 we have reached to 40 nanometer so 68x improvement has happened and here it is not there but if I talk about 2022 okay it is almost 1 nanometer okay. So uh, I, uh, I think Intel or someone has already announced uh, the production within 1 nanometer okay. So the thing is uh, see how much difference we have already reached or achieved okay but that if you talk about 1975 to 2010 okay numerical aperture okay has the most significant contribution compared to other two parameter so this is just to give an idea that uh, how people are you know scientists or uh, researchers in lithography optical lithography are tuning the parameters to get the desired thing okay so uh, another point is i want you people to uh, inform or you know tell me that with this parameter okay uh, optimize all three parameters okay and what is the best possible resolution we can obtain with this setting okay use this table you can also use some other parameters if you already aware okay but with this projection based litho okay what are the uh, best possible resolution you can obtain okay so how much smaller dimension we can get this in other words the same thing what is the best possible resolution you can get so consider uh, one of the optical source consider oblique illumination which will make your k 0 0.5 you can check it if you can even go 0 0.25 or not okay and then you can also check the highest aperture let us keep only this much which is available here na however in literature this i have read somewhere it is 1.4 or something you for now consider 1.35 okay put this values okay take lambda if you can go beyond 193 completely okay try to go uh, put this parameter and let me know uh, you know uh, be, uh, next uh, linked to a class we will see how much we can get the resolution using this okay and then uh, does it make sense to have even micrometer or nanometer structure with this particular setup so that is like an overall idea okay so for now it is like uh, homework okay to uh, check what are the smallest dimension you can get with this current settings with all these parameters you can uh, search and if you have any other uh, you know more improved or optimized parameter you can use that also and try to learn this particular thing and identify that in that particular scenario okay how much lower your uh, resolution you can get. Now when I say best resolution is obviously a lower resolution because you are getting micro and nano structures on your substrate. So as much finer as possible again the same story applies here the smaller the dimension the more functionality can be accommodated in the one space one you know uh, uh, constant chip area which will give more functionality in smaller space smaller devices and that will help in you know uh, getting more uh, thing again with that also you have to consider low power and all this thing that is a different ball game altogether I will not go into the detail for that 
a sub threshold current and all this thing. But yeah, for now uh, try to identify how much lower resolution you should be able to generate in this scenario and uh, with that try to compare this thing foundries are successfully uh, fabricated 2 micrometers 2 nanometers rather sorry then how we can get that okay. Here it will give you some number okay let us say it is x and let me give you hint also x micrometer okay then from x micrometer to this journey. So far what we have understood how litho optic is important okay and how it is characterized it is very important aspect and the same thing will apply for any kind of micro electrode array you make it uh, for any kind of neural engineering research right. So, this litho optics will give you some resolution okay that is your main that is a main parameter in the litho optics main parameter there is there are few micrometers okay. Now, from few micrometer to nanometer journey okay this we have seen in this class litho optics 1 okay this journey we will see in the next class litho optics okay. Uh, it is equally important for neural science it is equal important for all the uh, micro engineering uh, devices because litho remains common for all the applications specifically important for this thing as well neural engineering or developing micro electrode array. So, with that I will see you in the next class. Uh, to know how we can you know or how the technology has transversed from few micrometers to nanometers ok. We will see in the next class if you have any doubts anything feel free to write us in the forum uh, we will see you in the next class bye take care.